Romans chapter 12 and verse number 12. The word of God reads as follows. I'll be reading from the New King James, a version of the Bible. At times I'll be quoting from the American Standard Version and also the King James Version. Romans chapter 12 and verse number 12. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. Continuing steadfastly in prayer. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy and divine word. There's trouble in the congregation. Trouble. Well, what do you mean, Brother Jenkins? Well... Let's look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse number 5. It says, uh, examine yourself. So let's examine uh, the preacher first. Mm -hmm. Let's examine him first. Mm -hmm. When we look at the uh, functions of uh, the, the preacher, the preacher is to uh, preach the gospel, not only inside the building, but outside of the uh, building. The preacher is to uh, edify. Uh, the members of the body of Christ. The uh, preacher is to defend the faith that was one time for all time delivered uh, to the saints. Jude, verse number uh, three. He's also supposed to uh, defend those in the congregation from uh, false uh, teachers. The preacher is supposed to appoint elders and have deacons uh, appointed. Yes, we know when a congregation starts, it's not going to, a young congregation is not going to start off by having elders and deacons, but there should come a time in the congregation where there are elders and deacons. And then the preacher is to uh, teach others so that they can teach others. Grassroots uh, movement. So there's trouble in the congregation. But let us continue to realize from Romans chapter 8 and verse number 1, you're not condemned. Let us continue to uh, realize that as you're striving to the best of your ability to walk in the light, as God is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ is Son is cleansing you from all unrighteousness. So though we, though you, though we collectively, though I am coming short of his glory, uh, sometimes what happens is uh, all of us have certain baggage that we brought from the, the past. And sometimes we hold on to that baggage a little longer than we should. Sometimes there's certain things that we have to shed off. And we're not shedding them off as fast as we should. Sometimes, now we know we are supposed to dig into the Word of God, read it, apply it to our lives, uh, memorize it, meditate on it, pray about it, and study it. But sometimes life gets us busy. Too busy. That's not an excuse for me. It happens. Trouble in the church is nothing new. When you look at Acts, for example, when you look at Acts chapter 6, when the Grecian widows were being neglected, in the daily administration, and they had a, a legitimate complaint. They were being neglected. So we see in the first century church, we see the issue of respect of persons, if you will. And the leadership at that time, the apostles, realized that it was something that had to be uh, taken care of. And they took care of it according to God's 
instructions given to them. So trouble in the congregation is trouble in the church is nothing new. It's been there since the first century. And trouble in the congregation in some form or fashion, trouble is going to be in the congregation. But God says to you and I, and these are principles that we can apply. We're looking at, if you will, Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 13. When we look at Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 13, we've been looking at it bit by bit. God is showing you and I how we're to have our relationships with uh, one another. The title of this message, quickly, is in the tribulations that we're going to go through, keep rejoicing, keep persevering, keep praying for your brothers and sisters. When we looked at Romans chapter 12 and verse number 9, we want to continue to realize that the umbrella, if you will, is love. Let us continue to uh, love one another. Let us continue to uh, grow in loving God with the totality of our being. Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 40. And loving our neighbors, loving one another in the same way that we love ourselves. When we looked at Romans 12 and verse number 9, we've looked at this previously. It says, let love be without hypocrisy. Let love be without a mask. Let us take the mask off so that we can continue to help one another and be there for one another and support one another. It says, abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. It says, Romans 12 and 10, we looked at this. Be kindly affectionate to, notice, one another. We're seeking the master to one another. With brotherly love, in honor, giving preference <coughs> to one another. Then we went to Romans 12 11. It says, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit. And we looked at when we're doing that, we're serving the Lord. When we're uh, loving one another. And serving one another, we're serving the Lord. Now we're coming to Romans 12 and verse number 12. We want to notice this pattern. When we look at Romans chapter 12 and verse number 12, and when we look at rejoice, when we look at being patient, when we look at continuing steadfastly, all those three words... The language that God is using there is that you and I do this continuously. That be continuous action. Action that never starts. A frame of mind that continues. So we should be in our minds right now rejoicing for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Being patient with one another. Continuing steadfastly, rejoicing in what? The hope that God would have you to have for your brothers and sisters in Christ. Patient, persevering in the tribulations with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes, there's a reason why there's going to be uh, trouble in the congregation. We'll look at that in a moment. Continuing steadfastly in prayers for your brothers and sisters in Christ. Romans 12. In verse number 12, the focus, tribulation, patience in tribulation. What does tribulation mean? Tribulation means trouble. It means pressure. It means affliction. It means anguish. It means burdens. It means persecution. Now, why is this going to happen in some form or some degree, one of another, in every congregation? Why? None of us have been perfected yet. None of us have been completed yet. Brother Jenkins has not been perfected yet. He has not been completed yet. Well, how do you know that, Brother Jenkins? Well, that's one reason why we have the Word of God, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 through 17. 
all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the person of God might be perfect, might be complete. So thus God is letting me know that if that's the reason why he's given me this, then I'm not there yet. I haven't been perfected yet. I haven't been completed. So, yes, there's going to come times when Brother Jenkins is going to cause some trouble in some form or fashion in the congregation because he hasn't been completed yet. Now, we want to remember because I haven't been completed, now, that's not an excuse for me to sin. Romans chapter 6, verse number 1. And follow. But notice what's going to happen. First John chapter 3 and verse number 2. Beloved, now are we the children of God. And it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. Why? For we shall see him as he is. See again, the problem is sin. That's the problem. But when Jesus comes back, that's going to be solved. He's going to take care of the sin problem for us. We'll see him as he is. Right now, when we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 18. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, in a limited image, the glory of the Lord, are being changed into the same image from level to level by the Spirit, by the Lord. Okay, so that's what's happening with you and I right now. We're looking at our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, when we're looking at the Scriptures, and when we continue to read it, when we continue to uh, strive to live it out, when we continue to try to impart it in our hearts, heart so that we can meditate upon it and pray about it and study it, we're being changed into the image of Jesus. But when he comes, then we'll see him as he is. It will be no longer that limited image which we're seeing him in the word now. Focus on patience now. In the tribulations, patient means to persevere. It means to uh, stay under. It means to remain. It means to undergo. It means to bear trials. It means to have fortitude. It means to endure. It means to take patiently. So thus, when there is trouble in the congregation because of my brothers and sisters in Christ, Brother Jenkins has to persevere in the way that God would have them to. God would have Brother Jenkins to remain in the things that he would have Brother Jenkins to do for his brothers and sisters in Christ. He would have Brother Jenkins to have fortitude in continuing and doing what God would have him to do even though there's tri tribulations and there's troubles from the members. And what's of the reasons why Brother Jenkins has to continue to have uh, patience for his brothers and sisters? Because his brothers and sisters are going have, to have patience for him. Remember, we're talking about the one another's. We're talking about mastering in the mutual relationships that we have with one another. The, the, the back and forth. So I'm growing in loving you and thus is coming back and you're growing in uh, loving me. Rejoicing. So thus, that means to be cheerful. It means to be calmly happy. It means to have joy. It means to delight in God's grace, literally, to experience God's grace, to be conscious, to be glad for his grace. 
So when we're going through those troubles, we want to be conscious that God's grace is there. That he's extended himself to us. That his power is there so that we can continue to grow. When you and I look at uh, James chapter 1 verses uh, 2 through 4, it says, Count it all joy, brethren, when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing that the trying of your perseverance develops patience. But let patience have its perfect work. For what reason? That you might be perfect and entire, lacking nothing. Who was perfect and entire, lacking nothing? Jesus. See, God wants you and I to continue to be conformed to the image of his dear son. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 29. That's where life is. That's of the reasons why Jesus came so that you can have a spiritually abundant life. St. John chapter 10 and verse number uh, 10. So God, when we're going through uh, troubles, God wants us to be cheerful about it. He wants us to continue to rejoice. Now, what are you rejoicing for? Rejoicing in the hope for your brothers and sisters that God would have you to have. What is hope? Hope is anticipation. It's an expectation. It's desire. It's confidence. Hope has been described as an earnest desire with an expectation of receiving something. Here's an example. Even though my brothers and sisters are coming short they're not condemned. They're walking in the light. So I have that earnest desire that when Jesus comes, he's going to take my brothers and sisters back with him. And I expect that to happen. That's the hope that God would have you and I to have for one another. Notice Philippians chapter 1 and verse number 6, what the hope includes. Paul said, God through Paul says, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you. Now watch this. Everybody that has been baptized into Jesus Christ has heard about the gospel. The gospel that we find in the word of God. Everyone that has heard about the life, that burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ, everybody that believed it, everybody whose mind changed from what they thought previously to what God says in his word, everybody that confessed, yes, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and then was baptized into Christ for the remission of their sins, Acts 2.38, God began a good work in them. So, now, they might not be growing as fast as I think they should grow, yet I'm confident of this very thing, that because God has begun that good work in them, I'm confident that he will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I have that confidence in my brothers and sisters in Christ. And thus as I have that confidence, I'm going to grow in dealing with them in the way that God would have me to. Continuing steadfastly, it means to be earnest towards, to be constantly diligent, to attend carefully, and persevere in all its exercises to adhere to closely. It means to attend continually. Now, what is God saying there? He's saying that that's the kind of prayer life that I need to have. So I need to pray continuously, steadfastly, on a regular basis, all the time, for my brothers and sisters in Christ. I need to be earnest towards that prayer. I need to be constantly diligent in
in that prayer. I need to call that name sometime. I need to spend some time in prayer. And it needs to be on a regular basis. I need to attend carefully to that prayer for my brothers and sisters in Christ. I need to persevere in all the exercises of prayer, supplications, petitions for my brothers and sisters in Christ. And again, I need to call them by name. I need to grow in having the same kind of prayer life that our Lord is saying that Jesus Christ had. I need to sometimes wake up early in the morning and pray. I need to have a, a prayer partner. I need to attend continually in prayer. May we continue to look unto Jesus. May we continue to look at Jesus. Hebrews 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author. That word author means Jesus, he's the trailblazer. He blazed a trail where there was no trail for you and I to make it to heaven, for you and I to have a spiritual relationship with God. The author and the finisher of our faith, not only did he begin it, but he completed it. When I look at how many things I begin and I don't complete, I have to say, thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Jesus went all the way. He didn't go part way. He went all the way. He paid it all. The author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before, meaning that joy was laid out in field. What was that joy? That joy was the salvation of you and I. He endured the cross, despising the shame. He looked down on the shame. And now when we look at Jesus, he has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Mission accomplished. He sat down on the throne. Mission accomplished. Glory be to God. Will you be saved from your sins? You've heard about the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And one of the things that you want to know and never forget that God loves you. He loves you dearly. He loves you more than you can't even comprehend how much God loves you. It's beyond your comprehension and he wants you to be saved. He wants you to have a spiritual relationship with him. He doesn't want you to uh, perish. He wants you to be found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which remain and are alive shall be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. It says, therefore, comfort one another with those words. Those are some comforting words. He does not want you to be found in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. He doesn't want you there. The Christians were being tr uh, troubled. And as Christians are being troubled today, persecuted by the world, and its uh, philosophies and its opinions and its uh, wisdom that they seek to impress upon us and impress upon our children. So God through Paul says, and to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord shall be revealed from heaven with, with his mighty angels. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who are those, those that know not God and obey not the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And what's going to happen? He doesn't want this to happen to you, but this will happen to everybody that has not obeyed the gospel of Christ. 
either when they die physically or when Jesus Christ comes, it says, will be punished with everlasting destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. He doesn't want you to be found. He wants you to be in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. But you obey the gospel <coughs> that you might have a spiritual relationship with him. Be baptized with the remission of your sins. Added to the Lord's church, Matthew 16, 18, and 19. And then be faithful unto death. And Jesus has promised, I'll give a crown of life. As we stand and sing the Savior's invitation.